Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Lee Hornberger, Certified Genetic Counselor, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm talking about how to find that perfect volunteer or paid advocacy experience to list on your genetic counseling grad school application and to talk about in your interviews. A lot of people reach out to me and ask me to review their CVs or personal statements, and I see time and time again the same types of advocacy and counseling experience. Crisis text line, Planned Parenthood. And there's nothing wrong with those. Those are great opportunities. Common isn't bad, but a more unique advocacy role could be one of those ways to set yourself apart from the hundreds of other candidates who are applying. I would love for each of you to find an advocacy or counseling role that you are super passionate about. So in today's video, I'm gonna explain some of the ways to brainstorm and identify some of these more unique advocacy roles. The first thing I want you to do is just take out your phone or a pen and paper and jot down, think about, brainstorm for just a few minutes from a group of people or a cause that you are passionate about, that you would like to advocate with or advocate for. For me, it's kids. I feel so passionately about helping kids or kids who are in bad situations. That is a big group that stands out in my mind. And I can kind of hone in even further on that and think about kids that have witnessed or been a part of domestic violence or abuse. That's one of the advocacy positions I thought out as I was preparing for genetic counseling grad school application cycles. I've also worked with children who are refugees more recently. The other group of people that's always stood out in my mind are people who have psychiatric conditions, specifically severe psychiatric diagnoses that impact their daily life. Because I was interested in working with individuals with psychiatric illness, I found a volunteer position during undergrad working at the locked psychiatric ward at the hospital that was part of my university system. So I'm just going to read a short list that I started brainstorming really quickly of different causes or groups of people. So use this list just to get your juices flowing, but think about what causes or groups of people um, you feel most passionately about. Homeless shelters and support organizations, LGBTQ plus organizations, hospice, special Olympics, disease or syndrome organizations. So maybe you're specifically interested in Alzheimer's disease or muscular dystrophy or ALS. This could be general or specific social justice organizations, patient advocacy, refugee organizations, teen parent organizations, disabled communities, marginalized communities, Peace Corps, bereavement groups, stillbirth photography, veteran organizations, indigenous people organizations. And the list could go on and on. I could probably, if I just had like a couple minutes, probably list out a full page of different um, groups or causes. So once you figure out what you're passionate about, Google that along with your city's name and see if anything comes up. Obviously, if you're in a smaller city or town, it's possible nothing will come out, but you might be surprised. And the cool thing is these smaller, lesser known organizations often give individuals a bigger opportunity to get more involved and to volunteer more regularly and without so many like systems and protocols in place compared to some of the large organizations. Explore what comes up on your Google search, but if nothing comes up locally, don't fret. There are so many opportunities to work on advocacy remotely. Maybe you won't be able to work directly with the group you wanna serve. There are a lot of organizations to do administrative tasks or social media remotely. So if you're open to that, reach out to groups, even those that aren't in your city or that you wouldn't be able to drive to. Many websites, especially for the big organizations, will have a volunteer here link and a whole web page where you can fill out a form about um, your interest in volunteering or even click on specific volunteer roles and learn more about them. So you can get started that way, but don't be deterred if a website does not have that volunteer page. Just find an email, whoever you think the most appropriate email is based on what you're seeing on their website and email them. Share a little bit about yourself, why you're interested in working with this organization, what you have, what you can bring to the table, what your availability is, and ask them if they have anything you can do. It is a huge gift to give an organization free man hours. I'd love some free man hours for Katie Lee CGC. If somebody wants to edit my videos, do social media posts for me, come up with creative real ideas, like I'm all about that. And a lot of organizations would be really thankful for your help. So don't be afraid to reach out and introduce yourself and ask if they could use your help. Another way to brainstorm ideas is to think about what do you live by? Do you drive by a halfway house every single morning on the way to school or work? Why don't you stop in that halfway house and ask if they could use a volunteer if that sounds like an interesting opportunity to you. If you can find an opportunity that's super close to where you live or where you work, that's gonna make this really easy to do. So I would encourage you to explore opportunities that are really close and local to you as well. 
If you don't find success in my first two approaches, the other thing I would encourage you to do is try volunteermatch.com, which I'll put in the description down below. This is a website where volunteer organizations can submit their listings for volunteer roles that they're hoping to fill. So you can check this out and see if anything sounds like a good opportunity for you. I'm really hoping that these tips give you a good starting place. I've been seeing this question so frequently on Discord, people asking, how do I get started in finding an advocacy role? And it's not that hard. Just think about what you're passionate about and seek out those opportunities. If you're looking for more tips on navigating the process of how to prepare to apply to genetic counseling grad school, because it's a complicated one, check out my digital download, my bird's eye view guide. It's linked down below and you'll see all sorts of tips for each process of the application. If you're just looking for free content, that's all good too. Please like this video and subscribe and you'll see frequent videos come out for me answering your questions about the genetic counseling grad school application process and genetic counseling as a career. All right, guys, have a good one. Take care. Bye.